Hey everyone, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible, but there's a lot of information to cover about player-owned ports, so just hang in here and you'll come out quite knowledgeable about all this. First off, the northwest corner, the Black Marketeer. You can view goods or just buy all. I recommend buying all every single day. It resets at the normal reset daily time, like for spins and sandstone and all that stuff. So every day upon reset, at the same time for your uh, missions and all, I'll, I'll get to that in a second. So you want to buy from him every day. Inside the bar, it's not too important. You can customize your captains. You can right click and say customize and it'll just change their looks, their clothes. Every Thursday, you can get gossip from the barmaid. You could buy a beer too, but that's you just get a beer and you can drink it just like in the regular pubs in RuneScape. So you get gossip and that'll replace one of your missions with a special mission from her. Okay, so in the office, I think it's called. You can't really do much here. I mean you can, but you don't need to because you can, once you reach Skull Island or the Skull area, alright, which is this one here, then you access um, port management and port management lets you focus on which kind of scrolls you want to get and which region you want to focus on different regions give different things the arc gives bamboo coins and bamboo or chimes the pirate coins and the skull gives gunpowder and then there's further re regions for us to explore uh... you can talk to the partner i don't think he really does much so um... You can't go upstairs at least not yet this building here there's nothing in here you'll upgrade it later So on to actually managing your port. Resources, top left. You just put your mouse over it, you don't need to click it, you just mouse over and they'll drop down and you can look, you can mouse over to see what things are, slate, jade, gunpowder, all that. You access new items as you progress further into different regions. Visitors, let me get rid of this, visitors are people that are special missions. Alright, let me open this and show you. Okay, special voyages. Um, I do not have any meat, but it'll say instead of a jade from the throat, meet the assassin or meet the whaler or something, okay? That's under special voyages. Standard voyages you get 12 per day. And that's it. If you click this button here, which is reroll, which will change your mission out for something else, you lose one of your voyages per day. So you should really only re-roll if you absolutely cannot confidently do any of your current missions. Um, I haven't really set this up right now. Like I could go into settings, and I will in a moment. But you see, this is a 57%. That is an okay success rate, but I wouldn't recommend sending a ship out at that unless you're really feeling lucky. I would aim for 80 plus to be confident. I, I mean, 90 or 95 if you can get it, or even 100. But I really wouldn't recommend sending a ship out nowhere near 50 or 60 percent unless you absolutely have to, because you can actually damage your boat so that you can't use it for in a certain period of time, and you can lose some or all of your crew members, including your captain. And all right, movement. So okay, I'm jumping around a lot. So special voyages is how you unlock people, and it'll say meet the whaler. So you do that mission, and then you'll get a cutscene when your boat returns. That does not put him in the port. Upon reset each day, your people have a random chance of coming into the port, the people that you've unlocked. So I have the Whaler and the Assassin. Now, real quick, let me go into customization, or upgrade building, I guess it is. And... Right... Oh, there. Okay, these icon spots. You can attract certain people for certain special missions if you'd like. Now, see, you can attract the uh, whaler, attract the biologist. It doesn't guarantee you to attract, it just makes them more likely. Increases your chance. So, I have, let's see, the convict here and the assassin. I'm glad these appear next to each other. Because the assassin and the convict will actually work jointly. So, when the assassin is in your port, like you see here, assassin in port, I can get an emission from the assassin, which is right here, the assassin. I've actually got two. And when the convict is in port, you can get a mission from the convict. But if they're in port together, they will 
or can give you an extra joint mission between the two of them because certain character types want to work together. And you can find that out by talking to, if what you have you people want? in port, you talk to them and you will say, do you prefer to work alone? I'd consider working with that convict who frequents your bar. So, we practice similar crafts. I have unlocked him and that's why she'll say I consider working with the guy that frequents your bar. I don't think he's actually ever showed up. And the whaler should be around here somewhere, but we're not going to spend time looking for him. Anyway. Okay. So. Buying crew members. I currently have a full roster. You can only have 25 people. So if I want to buy someone else, I have to dismiss someone. You can do that by clicking on the person here, and you can see their stats. And then you would click dismiss. And it'll ask you if you want to, but I'm not going to do that. Info? What info? Uh, info's right here. I don't know why. Anyway. Each day, upon reset, you get a captain in the captain slot. Upon the next day of reset, I'll get one another captain. I'll get one every day, but I'll have one more in my roster, and then I'll have to pick and choose to dismiss one to get a new one. Now, I, I know I'm jumping around, but just hang in here, watch the whole video, and you're going you're gonna to know a lot. Upgrading the bar. 3% um, chance to attracting higher quality captains, okay? I do not have slate yet, so I can't build that. But each day, you have a chance to get better captains. And the more you upgrade it, you have a chance to get better captains. And even though as you're going on, you level up, sorry, wrong thing, you level up your people, uh, some of the people, the newer people are really good. The numbers in the top left in this menu here are what ship they're on. If it has a dash, they're not on a ship. I only have two available ships, so they all go in line anyway, so I don't know why they need a 1, a 2, and a 3. Like, all of them in this line, well, let's say this line here are all on ship 2, and all of them here are ship 1. So, uh, the number at the bottom right is their level. It's kind of hard to see, but you can see there's a 2, he's got a 3, do I have, okay, I got a 0 here. They start at level 0, not 1, and here's a 1. Because some of the numbers are hard to make out. In general, actually I think always, the blue are seafaring, the blue bandana people, the green are morale, and the red are combat. So you can tell just by like looking at your people's picture before you have to go and say, I need a seafaring guy, you know only to look at the blue people. So, uh, once again, leveling up your people can be good. Let's see, who's the captain I started with? It was... no that guy? Yeah, I think it was this one here. Okay, so he's level two. I have Mary... Uh, you, you're you gonna have different captains, or you're probably gonna have different captains. It's not the same for everyone. Mary Bonnie had better stats. I got her on first day also. She was a purchasable captain versus uh, Oakthorn. Oath, Oath, Oathbreaker. Thorn. So um, I was using her more, especially for harder missions, and so she leveled up faster and got even better stats. So, um, but you see the difference. These two are both level 2. So 120 morale versus 60. 140 combat versus 120. 240, I'm sorry, seafaring. 140 combat, 140 seafaring versus 120 seafaring. 240 combat versus 60 combat. And 180 speed versus 60 speed. So most likely when the time comes, once I buy one more captain and then on the 6th, one that I go to get, I'm most likely going to dismiss this person, but we'll have to wait and see. It might be like a really crappy person that I don't want to buy in the first place. Okay. You get, I believe, 12 new people per day. That doesn't mean you get to, like, automatically have them. Some of them have costs, you'll see over here, and some of them you can actually get for free, like stowaways. Let's see, was it this one? No. There's someone called a stowaway in here. Um, I may not be able to find them for you. Okay, smugglers I'm pretty sure are free. And I guess you're not going to get to see a stowaway. I might have dismissed them all. Oh, here we go, stowaway. Okay. So, the Brimhaven Pirates I think cost 80 coins. I don't remember. You can see it all right here. Again, with the reroll, you can click reroll for your people, just as you can for the missions, but it eliminates one of the ones that you get. So you could possibly, on the first and second day if you're playing player on ports, you could buy all 12 because you have more than enough room. And then the next day you'll have 12 more available to you. Um, you'll, you'll learn what you want to do strategically as far as re-rolling or buying new people. I generally try not to re-roll 
unless I really need someone new for a mission, like I I can't get close to the percentage I need, or I'm maybe I'm kind of close and I, I just need a different person with better stats. So I'll re-roll someone that I have duplicates of, or that I'm not particularly interested in saving. Them. These guys I haven't re-rolled yet, just because they've got 350 morale. So if I get a heavy morale mission and I see them as worth buying and dismissing someone else, then I'll do so. This one has very high speed. The speed is how quickly your mission finishes. And I'm not eager to re-roll any of them because they're particularly good, and I'm certainly not eager to dismiss one of my people and then buy them because they cost a lot of materials. Uh, they are, these guys here are better than quite a few of the people I have, but what's to say that I might buy one of these guys instead of re-rolling, and then like a better person than this instead of 350, 400, or 450 is in his place. So instead of um, re-rolling and then getting them available, I just wasted all the money and now I can't buy the new guy. So that's just a little thing to consider on uh, your crews. Be careful how you spend your supplies. You don't get more too easily. You gotta do missions for them. Okay, extremely important. Most of the reason I'm making this video is traits. Now none of these guys unfortunately have traits, but if they did it'd be right here under their head. Okay, and I'm gonna show you on here. See it says no traits. No traits. If I click on him no, it doesn't go down here. It's still these guys. Okay. Plucky. You can mouse over the traits. Improves combat. I think it's only a 2% boost, but it's to everyone on the ship. So, if you're doing a combat mission, and, I mean, he's already got very high combat as it is 235 compared to other people. 195, 195, 104, okay, 107. So, this would just add further on to the combat of all of them. So if I was doing a heavy combat mission, I had a bunch of combat people, it would boost all of their combat up some. So that's nice. Again, you would see that under their head. You would mouse over right over around here, but none of those people have it. Okay, Eagle Eye is increases seafaring. I'm trying to find it for you in the list while talking. I'll get back to him. Okay, Eager is for morale. Eagle Eye is on one of my guys here. Eagle Eye here is for seafaring. Then there's special people, such as the Ar Ardoin Merchant, Storekeeper, I'm sorry. He, his class is a merchant. And again, you need a mouse over over here before you buy people to see what you want. Okay, improves 10%, improves your loot by 10%. So it does not stack, so that means if you have like four of them, if it's a super easy mission, you're not getting 45%, or 40%, sorry. Okay, uh, no traits, no traits. What am I looking for? The Cyclops. Rallying Cry. All XP gains for this crew member's boat are increased by 10%. Now, I tried to explain this to someone earlier, and they are like, no, your crew already increases 10% when they level. This increases more. So if this guy is on your boat, and any of the people on the boat level, they increase 10% extra. So he's a very good guy to have. You have to unlock hit the possibility for him in one of the missions. And then finally, the exploding golem. If you cannot get your percentage high enough, maybe 55, 60, 65, and that's as much as you can do and you want to do the mission, you put him on the boat too, and if one of the crew members is going to die, he will take their place. Now, you might look and say, well, he's got very high stats, why would you want that? Um, you may not want that, <laughs> you, but if you've leveled any of your other crew members up quite a bit and you really don't want to give them up, you can buy another one of him with these, yeah, I think it starts uh, 200, 220, and 210. So it's already really high. So he's leveled once for me, or maybe twice, level two. I don't remember. But if you've put a lot of work into another person, say like my uh, first mate, even though my first mate is not as good as him, that's another extremely important one. That's the final one I want to get to, though. I, w I would rather lose the golem over the first mate. Now, the first mate, Solidarity. I believe all first mates have this. Everyone I've talked to, their first mate has it. Gives plus 25 to all stats per unique crew member aboard. That means everyone on this boat here gets 25 more to all of their stats. So his stats overall, 70, 90, 80, 30, are not very high. But you might notice when putting him on a boat versus someone else of, say, 150 or even 200 in a stat, your percentage goes up with him. That's because he's increasing all the other crew members' stats. So, per crew member, and I believe it does include the captain, so that's 125, and then including himself is 150 extra 
in any particular stat you're looking for plus whatever he has. So if we're going for morale, his morale is 70 plus the 150, so 220. So if you've got a crew member that can provide 220 or more in something, then yes, it would be worth it to use that. But otherwise, um, the first mate is an excellent choice, and you don't want to lose him, and he's great for uh, multiple stat missions. All right, last topic. I know this has been a long time. Thank you for hanging in with me, and um, partially thank yourself because you've gained a lot of knowledge so far. I did show you this real quick. The archipelago map just shows you progress to the next zone. And nothing too important there. But we did go over this. Let you focus on which particular scrolls you want to get. Which region, yes. Okay, the buildings. The shipyard just shows you the ships. You can click on individual ships and scroll through. So finally the missions. An idea on how to set up a mission. So, let's look at this here. You go, you're going to want to go into edit ship. Now I guess you could, there's a few ways you could get to this menu. You could pick on a ship here and then click voyage list right here. You can go to shipyard and then you can scroll over to the ship and do the same thing. You pick the voyage list. Okay, so you need to pick a voyage. Then once you decide on what mission you want to do, you can toggle between the ships. I, one of my ships is out so I can't pick it. I'm going to say edit ship. Okay. First thing I like to do is the crew, but you can do this differently. Now, if you know it all, everything needs to be in one area, let me back myself up. We're going to go to this one here. If I know it all needs to be seafaring, I can immediately change my ship's items to seafaring. Oh, we still got to go over upgrades. I got to be fast. Okay. Uh, you want to buy the boat upgrades when you can. The rudder increases the speed. That's all it does. So you see all of them increase speed. You require different resources. Okay, so right now, uh, this one requires gunpowder. I could do that, but I'm saving my gunpowder to buy other upgrades for now. Okay, the deck, just put your mouse, or click on the upgrade, and it'll show you what it does before you buy it. So I click on the entwined rigging, and it shows that it's uh, 450 seafaring. It gives you the number in green compared to the currently equipped item. Okay, let me go over that again. So, if I have C, my small crate of food. Okay, I'm going to put that on the boat. Now, the active one is 100 morale. So, if I click on a sturdy rigging, it has the morale in zero because it's showing that it's going to go down. But the seafaring is going to go up. I need seafaring for this. I don't need morale. So, I want to activate anything that I need seafaring for. That was dock 2. The rudder gives a very good mix of stats as far as the second level ones go. You've got an increase to combat and seafaring. One of them gives 50 more seafaring versus combat than the other, so you can just look between those and pick what you need for your mission. Again, I need seafaring, so I want the one with higher seafaring. It's already equipped. Deck 1, once again, sturdy rigging, 200. The um, rams and figureheads are only combat and morale, so that doesn't really matter for this mission. It's only seafaring. Okay, so now we get to the crew. Captain first, and if it's a particularly hard mission, you're going to want to pick your best captain. Um, some captains will have higher traits, such as, see, this one has more morale, but this one has better everything else. So if this was a morale mission, I'd want to go with this one, but it's not. It is a seafaring mission, and this has the highest seafaring, so I'm going to leave that. Seafaring 195, okay, seafaring, seafaring. I had this um, already set up to try to save time. Um, I'm not sure how well I did on that. Okay, there's 150, and now uh, that's 87, so I believe all my others are over 150, yes. Okay, the golem is good to use, but he has no seafaring. The merchant would be double um, rewards, but he has no seafaring, and so does the cyclops, so I'm not going to bother with that. The cyclops is excellent to use on easy missions, so you put a bunch of people on there, put him on there also, and that'll help boost their levels. Now let me show you with the first mate. My success percent is 42%. And same with seafaring. Um, it, when you have multiple bars, oh, we'll try to get into that too. This is a very long video. I'm sorry. Okay. We've got the first mate. His seafaring is only 80. This guy here's seafaring is 150. Let's watch. We're at 42%. And now we're at still 42%. So just like I had said, it's 150 trade-off boost to all the stats. Okay, so 
it doesn't matter whether I have him or not on this one because um, that one actually evens out but now say the seafaring with 87 if I were to put that one there I actually lose percent so it's not worth it even though this person here has 87 and he has 80 he gives a boost to everyone else alright last thing is a mission with shared stats which would be this one no no what am I? okay fine now you see even though my seafaring here is very high it's 85 percent I'm only a 25% success rate because my other stats here. What you want to try to do on these types of missions is try to get the crews that have highest overall but shared stats. So I have high morale in combat on this one, so I'm going to throw him up here. And then the Cyclops also has high morale in combat, I'm going to put him up there. The first mate is always very good to have. So now 245 seafaring, 185. I'm looking for uh, something better than 185 is 195. Alright, so now I'm going to go into the boat changes. Uh, Captain, overall, this one is going to look best, I believe, yes. Okay, so then on the boat, you're going to have to play around with this a little bit and say, okay, my combat is higher, so do I want to go with uh, combat more? Now, so if I go for combat, I'm at 47% success, and now I'm down to 42. Even though I've boosted my combat, it's more about a balance when you have multiple bars. So, since I have uh, a lot of seafaring, I want to try to change that out. My morale and combat are both lacking, so I want to go with something for morale, a large crate of food. And then, uh, see, I'm up to 50% now, and now the co the morale, the combat, I'm sorry, and the seafaring are still a little imbalanced. So if I go with a single cannon, that may put me down. Yes, it did. So I'm going to go back up to the sturdy rigging. Like I said, you got to play around with a little bit. Rudders, again, only increase speed. I do apologize if I'm talking too fast for you. Um, YouTube has a nice pause and rewind feature, so use that if you have to. I'm going to boost my combat. I'm now up to 53%, and with the current crew and items I have, that looks like the best I'm going to do. I'm certainly not sending this mission off. And uh, that's about it. Okay, so your time down here, you can see when, when you're playing with your crew, if I were to put, say, my... No, not that one. Where is he? The fireworks guy fireworks enthusiast right here. If I were to put him up here, you notice the time drops down because of his speed. I do also have a Dwarven Army Man. I can throw him up there and the time will drop down further. Uh, I guess it's not going to display, but once you hit go, it'll give you a better estimated time. I'm not doing it right now. So I'm pretty sure that's about it. If you have any questions, any comments, please feel free to leave them, message me in game, or leave them here. Like this if it helped you, which I really hope it did. One more thing, Meg will be over here, I believe it's once per week. You can either talk to her and then she'll ask you for help or just right click and say get help or help her. She's not here right now, I can't show you. And you answer a few questions for her and then she'll go do stuff and she'll come back and give you rewards for it, money and XP. Okay, so subscribe for more. This was a lot. Again, I'm sorry for the length of the video. If you need more in-depth explanations, ask me or... I'll explain it in-game or I'll make another video for you and I can fo focus on specifics that you'd like. Once again, thank you for watching and good luck.